So hi, my name is Osman. I volunteer for an organisation called Hadaya. Here at Hadaya, our mission is to provide support and welfare for LGBTQI plus Muslims and promote social justice and education around the queer Muslim community to counter discrimination, prejudice and injustice. Today we are here with Asia, who is a volunteer with Hadaya and like many of us has more than one identity. So she is not only bisexual, but also a person of colour and Muslim. To begin with, um, Asya, could you please tell me a little bit about yourself, including your ethnic background, your cultural background, and even your age, if that's okay? Yeah, so I am a Pakistani Muslim and grew up in sort of a conservative, but with a sprinkle of liberal um, <laughs> Muslim household. And my, I'm now 20 and I live, I'm out of the house for university, so I like come home regularly. Great. Um, I can relate to you as well because I identify as uh, a gay Pakistani Muslim man as well. So, um, and I um, sort of, I'm still at home and I'm uh, closeted about my sexuality. Are you open about your own sexuality with your family? Um, so I am to my sisters, who are very supportive and lovely, um, not to my parents, because that's just a can of worms that I don't have the energy to open right now. No, that's fine. And um, so I'm just going to kind of move on to really having our discussion around being bisexual and Muslim and a person of colour. So my first question to you is, what contributed to helping you understand your sexuality? Um, so it took a very long time because, well, complete lack of conversational representation of any kind meant that, to, to be absolutely honest, until I was about 16, I didn't realise that LGBT Muslims existed. Um, and so that was very confusing. Um, but then from around the age of 16 I actually spoke I ended up speaking to a couple of closeted LGBT Muslims myself who had felt comfortable coming out to me um, because up until that point I had been a very strong LGBT community um, and then I sort of started having my own reflections on my relationships with people in real life and then by towards the end of school I kind of through um you know reading and watching things and doing my own self-reflection yeah figured out that I was bisexual and for me personally I can sort of relate as well um unfortunately um I'm a uh, I really struggle to reconcile my sexuality and faith in terms of, you know, for a long time when I was growing up, especially when I was in my sort of um, late teens and early 20s, I really didn't want to be, um, I didn't want to identify as being gay and um, just because I knew that my family would reject me. And as a result, I got into a lot of trouble with the police and just got involved in gangs and really it was I was around a lot of toxic masculinity and I think that um, made me suppress my feelings and um, I really just didn't feel comfortable um, being open. And I, I, the sad reality was I wasn't as lucky as you in terms of I really didn't have um, a, a group of friends that I could be open about. Um, I grew up in the kind of uh, late 80s, early uh, 90s. And in that time, just generally being... LGBTQI plus was just difficult for anybody. We didn't have any role models and there wasn't anything on media as such as television mm -hmm. or and not in a positive light. So it was really difficult to be sort of, um, to be gay and to be out as well. Um, mm -hmm. And that was some of my kind of unique experiences because of um, the era that I kind of uh, grew up in um, I just felt there wasn't anybody that I could communicate to because I had these two identities and I really struggled with that and that was my kind of uh, unique experience but um, my second question is what are some of the, your own unique experiences and challenges that you have faced as a bisexual person of colour? 
Um, so I guess the first big one was that it took a while to come to terms with the fact that I was okay with being bisexual in the sense that because obviously I was also attracted to men, it felt that it was just an easier route to ignore the other aspect of my sexuality because that would just make it easier to like live my life and continue. But obviously that isn't how it works in the real world. Um, so a big challenge was sort of coming to terms with fully um, how I navigated my sexuality, which is actually still something I'm doing. <laughs> I've definitely not finished that journey. Um, and sort of um, trying, trying to justify my existence in my head and that, um, you know, I had as much of a valid place as the other pe members of the LGBT community. Yeah, I mean, I, I can definitely relate to that as well. Um, you know, when I was in my 20s, I was in relationships with women, although I knew uh, deep down that I really wasn't bisexual. I was really just in these relationships just to try and conform to society. Um, and this is what I think um, a lot of people in society struggle with. They think that people who are bisexual um, are confused and, uh, and uh, don't know their own feelings, which are kind of really ignorant comments like that. And for me, um, I, ha I have been told by friends and uh, uh, LGBTQI plus friends that have said, oh, well, you must, uh, you must be bisexual because you've had relationships with women in the past. I was married as well. So I, um, I was married for uh, two years. And however, I have, I have never at any point felt bisexual. I have always mm. deep down known that I was gay. And the only reason I was in these relationships, and it's horrible to say this, but because I was hiding my sexuality. You know, mm. I um, wasn't sexually attracted to women and I am, I, I still, I'm not. But, um, and I think this is why it's important to try and give people who are bisexual that voice. Um, in terms of um, sort of your experiences um, with just generally the, the workplace, were you comfortable ever coming out in the workplace at all uh, or at college or university? Um, so during school, I didn't at, really speak about it at all, mainly because I didn't know myself. Um, and I was very sort of academically driven so I spent a lot of my time just like working and not doing anything else or thinking about anything else um and so by the time I'd figured this all out towards the end of school I was comfortable coming out to sort of my very close friends um and then when I went to university it was almost like a clean slate for me um where there wasn't anybody who had preconceptions of who I was or um what I was doing with my life um, and so I from the get-go was very open about who I was because um, you know I was living my new life in a different city um, and I had a very overwhelmingly positive reception from there and a lot of and I gained a lot of LGBT friends from university which has been really nice and they're a really great support network so I've personally been incredibly lucky that everybody that I have been open, open to has been supportive. Well, the majority, not everybody, but the majority. I mean, that's really nice to hear because, you know, this is what we want. We want people within our communities to kind of accept who we are and recognise that we can have more than one identity. Um, and that's quite powerful. And um, for me um, personally, I think um, I've, encountered people that have been kind of both positive when I came out and um, I've had negative experiences as well and a lot of my negative experiences unfortunately have come from the sort of religious community um, um, so that leads me on to my next question would you say religious communities are accepting of bisexual people and can you talk a little bit about your own experiences um unfortunately I definitely don't think that we are at a point where the majority of the religious community isn't 
there are obviously a few um, people within any community that are far more forward thinking and ahead of their time um, in that sense who I am friends with in my local community but the majority no definitely not ready for well no I think they are ready and they have to be ready but um, as in they are not accepting and my own experience has been that you know up for a very very long time the concept of the LGBT community was never discussed so it wasn't even that they were saying necessarily bad things about them it was more that like I just gen I don't know how to describe it but I just genuinely didn't know that they existed um or like if they did then everybody was white and American who was part of the LGBT community um and then beyond that when we did start having these conversations especially after um because i um, i'm originally based in birmingham um that's where the anderton park primary protest happened um which was the no outsiders protest that protested lgbt material in um sort of reception near one their classes um and that was the first time I ever had conversations with my family about the LGBT community really um which were overwhelmingly negative um and then um so it hasn't been a very good experience in that sense and whenever my parents and the wider community do talk about them it's always been negative so I tend to just remove myself from those situations yeah I mean that was quite awful I remember um, watching that on the news. I'm not from Birmingham, but um, I'm from Scotland, and I can tell you right now. I mean, it was it was very triggering for me to watch those Muslim par parents protesting outside that primary school, and basically, I felt like they were protesting against me, you know, mm -hmm. and my existence, which was really hurtful. Um, um, and uh, it's one of the reasons I'm still closeted because, for me personally, I don't really care what people think about me. Um, mm -hmm. as a gay Muslim man but what I do care about is how people would treat my parents my siblings I wouldn't want anybody to attack my family because of who I am as a person and I, I feel at this point uh, the Muslim community still has a long way to go in terms of allowing people to be themselves and you know be more open about discussing sexuality gender mm -hmm. and relationships um, you did earlier on mention that you came out to your sisters. Um, how was that experience? If you don't mind, I'd, obviously, if you don't feel comfortable talking about it, it's quite a personal account. Um, you don't need to talk about it, but um, I, I am really interested to see. Uh, you mentioned it was uh, they, they've been quite positive. Yeah, so I'm happy to talk about it. Um, yeah, so me and my sisters are all quite liberal and um you know we're all social activists within, it, within our communities and the wider society and I knew like my whole life that they've been on the same same wavelength as me in terms of um, their beliefs in various um, social issues um, and so I felt quite confident being able to tell them because I I've heard them speak about the LGBT community before and it had always been positive and supportive um, and they both had LGBT friends themselves um, and so I came out to them and they were both at different times and they were both you know supportive having said that though they are they have been supportive and they are still in that sense but I think that they have also played into this idea that because I came out as bisexual it's very easy for me to just marry a man and then it won't be an issue for our family um, and they have said that at times through you know, good with good intentions but it has come for me it's personally been quite hurtful um, because you know it makes me feel like I have to choose or I have to narrow down who I am as a person in order to keep the peace in the family or conform to a certain way um, so that has been more difficult to process because I can see where they're coming from in terms of their intentions and I have tried saying it to them before but we don't really talk about it that much so that's been a bit difficult but you know you take what you can get <laughs> 
Yeah, I mean, I can relate to you in that sense as well. Um, I'm from, as I mentioned, I'm from a kind of older generation. And for me, I'm not out to any of my siblings just because the fear of, you know, rejection. The sad reality is, um, you know, um, my siblings are in their kind of late 40s and they've got married and they've got children. And sometimes I can, um, I, I've heard them say, oh, I have a gay friend or my friend's bisexual. However, I, I, it's not something that I want my children to be around that kind of and that, that that kind of attitude that they have, and it's it's more of an attitude of ignorance because they really don't know anything about the community and society in general. People live in their own little bubble and aren't op as open to hear other people's stories and personal journeys. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's something that us here at Hadai, and especially you, with all the good work you do with our social media team, you know, you're constantly. Um, promoting the raising the awareness of LGBTQI plus Muslim it's so important because really there isn't anybody else doing that you don't see um, mm -hmm. representation that well um, so it's really important that we can reach out to the Muslim community and have these conversations um, and that's some of the stuff that we do with Hadaya is that we um, do panel talks we do events and try and raise awareness and then also provide a service to our own you know members um, because we, we do struggle sometimes because um, we struggle at home with our families, but then we have to struggle within the you know, queer community as well. Um, mm. And um, my next kind of question goes on a little bit about, more about the Muslim community, and it's around um, in the cis hetero Muslim community, I've heard people make comments such as bisexual people are confused. Um, have you, as a bisexual person, come across any ignorant comments like these in person or online and how do you challenge these kind of attitudes? So I would say that I've never come across them in person just because to be honest I'm more, I'm not really out to many Muslims other than my sisters and people at Hadaya. I don't tend to and one other person in my community um, so so I'm not really out to many Muslims and at university, all of the friends that I make are just because of the lack of correlation between Muslims who are out and um, the kind, the people that I try to stick with at university just because they're more accepting, that doesn't tend to overlap that much. So um, I haven't come across it in person and I'm not that vocal online about my sexuality just because in case my parents happen to stumble upon it one day. But I have definitely seen it come. I have still had those comments, not necessarily from Muslims, but generally from the cis hetero community. Um, I think that there's a lot of conversations that need to be had so that bisexual people can feel more comfortable in their identity because the problem is that because there is so much heteronormativity in our society, it means that a lot of people have internalized homophobia and that might mean like as your own experiences it might mean that they um for their own safety kind of try to justify that they're bisexual in that sense and then that obviously um uh makes it more complex to have a conversation about the bisexual community because a lot of people are battling internalized homophobia and so then if they do come out as gay which is obviously completely fine everybody's on their own journey that seems to justify to homophobic people that bisexual people are confused when really it's us having to tackle a wider so societal issue of you know compulsory het heterosexuality and um and trying to conform to being straight um, and until we do that, once we have done that, then the bisexual community will have a lot more power on their side to justify their existence. Um, I, I totally agree with you. I think that's so important. I mean, I have, I have to be honest with you, some of the comments I've heard from just generally uh, people in the Muslim community in terms of just um, the queer Muslim community, I've heard some kind of uh, ignorant comments. I've heard people uh, just not validate bisexual people and even in the queer community, forget the Muslim community, I think there's a lot of work needed 
within mm -hmm. our own sort of LGBTQI plus community. I think mm -hmm. um, for years and years, it's always been, I hate to say this, but gay, cis, white men that have mm -hmm. kind of been the main focus on media and, and news and magazines. And you just haven't had that role model. Um, I think the first time I came across a, a Muslim bisexual person was when I ha had heard about uh, Hafsa Qureshi, who mm -hmm. um, I think she works for Stonewall and she's a Stonewall advocate. Yeah. Um, and um, that was really powerful for me because for the first time on mainstream media, I had actually met someone who not only identified as Muslim, um, as clearly visibly Muslim as well, but she wore a headscarf, but also identified as bisexual. And that was really powerful for me. Um, and she was out there, you know, giving a voice to all these people. And um, I think uh, I, I felt really proud. I felt um, for the first time, I felt recognition. And that was sort of in my 30s, late 30s that, that happened. And it's quite scary to think that there's so many people who are of my age who haven't had that kind of role model there to speak mm -hmm. out for us and who have just kept our feelings internalized. Um, yeah. and it's important to have these kind of peoples. Have you met Hafsa Qureshi at all? I've not met her sadly, but I do. I follow her on social media. I think she's absolutely fabulous. I would love to meet her one day and just have a chat, but yeah. Yeah, she has contacted her eye, and I think it's something that we should definitely think about um, kind of linking in with her about her own experiences. I think she's so busy with the work that she does with Stonewall. She's kind of all over the, the UK doing different work and she'll probably even be mega busy this month, especially because we're um, celebrating um, by visibility. Um, mm -hmm. And she's definitely uh, a, a person that um, kind of relates to ourselves. Um, so my next question is around um, what role, if any, do you think education can play in helping address biphobic discrimination? So I think the firstly more representation the fact that they exist um, would be a great step um, because often in mainstream media they're not really spoken about as um, they're kind of often a side note or like a footnote to the wider conversation um, and then I think that if we start talking about what I was mentioning earlier about these um, sort of in sex ed classes and um, when, you know, like daytime discussions and stuff, we start talking more about these issues of um, like discrimination against LGBT people, specifically what bi people face and trying to take down stereotypes that that are often perpetuated about bisexual people, like they're confused, they cheat on people, they, 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 you know, can't make a decision, that kind of thing. Um, then I think that would go a long way in validating our existence and also, you know, decreased discrimination. I totally agree with that. Um, I mean, I grew up with no sort of, um, relationship or sex education at school. Um, I remember we got maybe an hour in our biology class about anatomy and reproduction and that was it. And it was really, I think, important that especially young people get this type of education around relationships, around gender identity, because it will allow people to, you know, not internalize feelings that they have. And, um, and I, like I said at the start, I really, really did struggle and I didn't I actually always felt there was something wrong with me. I, I sometimes look back and think if I, if only I had sex education or relationship education, that maybe I'd be a different person. Maybe I wouldn't have gone down the, the, the kind of toxic route I went down, which was, you know, uh, being very internalized homophobia and not accepting myself and um, getting married. And I mean, I, I think I spent a long, long time, a good few years of my life just not being myself and mm -hmm. that's really hard work having to live two separate lives generally is difficult I know you, you can appreciate what, where I'm coming from just mm -hmm. having to hide that big part of your life um, um, I've, I'm in a healthy relationship just now but sadly my family don't know anything about it 
you know, if I was to come out to my family, they would say to me, well, you know, being gay or bisexual is a lifestyle choice. It's a phenomenon from the West. It's something that you've picked up from TV, you know, mm-hmm, and that's, mm-hmm. that unfortunately is the attitude of most um, sort of LGBT, uh, sorry, most Muslim people in the community yeah, that I, sure. that's what I personally, personally think. And they think that it's something that I've picked up from watching or listening to the media and and that what really hurts me because I really do want to introduce my partner to my family because we've been together for two years now and we have a healthy relationship and sadly in the past it has affected my relationships because I haven't been out meant that my partner partners felt that I wasn't taking our relationship seriously Mm-hmm. Because I wasn't willing to allow them to meet my side of the family. I was always able to meet them. And then when we we're out and about, I wasn't really um, showing affection in public just because um, I didn't feel comfortable with my sexuality. However, as time is sort of moving on, I'm hoping that, you know, with the work that I'm doing with Hadaya and meeting people like yourself, I can become more confident and comfortable around my uh, sexuality. Mm-hmm. And that's why I think it's really important that we do educate people because I think the younger generations can then educate their parents and their grandparents and talk to them and break any stigmas and taboos around sexuality. That's Well, that's the, the dream. Yeah. Well, I actually, I've been sort of trying to do some subliminal um convincing of my parents um that you know to be more accepted the lgbt community and one technique i've taken up is so me and my mum watch a show together um where that is they have quite good lgbt representation and but like we've been watching this show for years it's like a soap opera so like it just happens that now there's more lgbt representation but we continue to watch it and she often has questions because she just obviously has no familiarity with them so sometimes and she knows that because i you know a young kid on i must know more about it um so she'll often be like oh i don't understand this like what do you think about this and i'll answer her questions and you know paint the lgbt community in a positive light and not just that but in like a normal light so i'll be like oh no that's like totally normal like yeah of course that makes sense that kind of thing and i genuinely think that it's helping and i'm able to educate her a lot oh that sounds amazing and i I love i love the fact that your mom's quite open-minded that she's not like dismissive of it i know for example my mum and dad just turned the channel you know that's how sad, mm-hmm. sad it's business. definitely been a journey it started off with just turning the channel on for my dad still he just kind of leaves the room but my mum is so a, bit more open. a lot yeah. more comfortable yeah and I, I think that's important as well that you know um we also appreciate from our family side so for example my parents are first generation migrants they they are they were born in another country with a different lifestyle with different values from what are my values and how I grew up and I have to respect that that they they I have a a sort of a privilege that they never had and they Mm -hmm. didn't have the country that they grew up in didn't have freedom of speech and it was you were persecuted for being LGBT um, so I understand why they have these negative views because that's what they were brought up with. And it's about breaking down these barriers and these sort of attitudes that people have. It's so important. And what do you think are um, some of the biggest challenges faced by the bi community, um, especially by people of colour? What would you say are some, some of the challenges that you've faced? Um, so... I suppose uh, things that I've touched on earlier, so, um, you know, reconciling. I think something I haven't really spoken to about is reconciling my faith and my sexuality in the sense that, um, so I'm not, I am, for a lot of my life, obviously, I attended Islamic studies classes. I've read the whole of the Quran. Like, I had a very religious upbringing in that sense that, and, like, to this day, you know, I will, Ramadan, Eid, all of these things, I will fully be involved in um, as part of my community. Um, 
but I am not practicing in a daily sense. So I don't yep. pray five times a day, etc. Um, and but a lot of the cultural values of growing up Muslim have stuck with me. So when I went to university, I didn't drink at all. Um, and now it's kind of at a point that I don't think I ever would. Um, but I, rem I know that when I went to uni and I didn't drink, often it would lead to a conversation where I would be telling people that it's because I'm Muslim. Um, and then sort of in the same next few sentences, they would find out that I'm bisexual. And often they would, I think they would never say anything, but you could just see sort of like the mental Olympics going on in their head to try and rec reconcile those two facts. Um, so I think there's a lot more that needs to be done sort of in letting other people know we exist because obviously outside of the Muslim community, there's the rest of society relies on our representation to know that we exist or stumbling into somebody, which is rare, sadly. Um, so it, it is difficult because you almost become a spokesperson for the entire community and your experiences, which I don't mind. And especially sort of in this environment where like the specific task and organization is about that, that's what I want to do. But you know, when it it's a casual conversation in a pub and I'm just trying to get to know people, it can sometimes just be tiring to suddenly be asked questions and become a spokesperson for an entire community of people. Yeah, I can totally relate to that. I've been in a few sort of gay bars around sweaty gay men in the middle of a dance floor and having to explain my religion and sexuality and how I reconcile them, which is kind of, you think to yourself, this is really an odd time to be doing, having this discussion, you know, mm. with someone who's maybe a little bit too drunk. And yeah. um, I, I definitely agree with you. I think we need more spaces generally that are not sort of drink alcohol and drug based places yeah. personally that's what I think society in general needs to have and sadly um, you know there's so many people that um, you know if you look at pride events I love mm -hmm. the fact that there is the pride march and there's sometimes vigils but a lot of it my sort of the gay friends that I'm around they they're more into the kind of party atmosphere so yeah. they want to go drinking they want to go they want to partake in you know, um, taking drugs and uh, stuff like that. This is something that people don't like talking about. However, for me, that's really difficult because when I go out with a group of gay men uh, who are not Muslim, uh, who are not people of colour, it's difficult because um, um, I have to rely on a group of people when I'm going out because if, I, if I've ever been out myself um, mm. in a gay bar or a gay community, I, I usually get stopped right at the front door. People mm. are like, you know what, uh, are you here, are you... I, uh, are you in the right place? Do you know this is a gay venue? And then I have to explain myself and say, yes, I am gay. And um, and then when I, um, I, it's difficult to interact with people when you get past the, the door, doorman or doorwoman, you know, it's um, it's that kind of whole idea. And I never, I've similar to yourself, I've never really, um, uh, I follow sort of, I am a practicing Muslim in terms of I do pray five times a day. And so uh, I don't, uh, partake in drinking alcohol and I find that I really struggle to go to find venues where I can mm -hmm. be myself and not um, um, need to have to be around people who are drunk and sometimes in these these are the kind of environments that I've come across discrimination and that could mm -hmm. be in terms of racism but I've also experienced um, people being biphobic transphobic um, and it's horrible when it comes from the LGBT community because, you know, you, th you expect them to be more supportive and more accepting of each other because mm -hmm. we've all felt that discrimination at some point. However, you have to remember people are people, you know, they all have incon unconscious biases. So, yeah, I think it's important that, you know, these are some of the challenges that we talk about and maybe we could highlight ways that we can improve this uh, situation by having more safe spaces and that's mm -hmm. what Hadaya tries to do we, you know we try and organize at the moment because of COVID we haven't been able to organize physical social meetups we were going, doing more online events however in the future I am looking forward to just being able to go to places like coffee shops or LGBTQI mm -hmm. plus bookshops and you know museums that 
promote queer identities, etc. I think that's so needed right now. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm hoping that, you know, we can have these spaces. Um, now, my next question is really around online spaces. I've, we've just talked about kind of physical spaces. Do you take advantage of any sort of apps or social support networks? Um, in fact, is there any by apps? I know, for, uh, for example, as a gay man, you've got hundreds of uh, dating apps and re um, online platforms that you can link in with. But I've, I actually don't think I've ever come across any, by, and that's just my ignorance, but I've never come across any apps for bi people, like networking and dating online, etc. Um, so I haven't really found any online spaces that are specifically for bi people and especially with dating apps there's there's there is an op there's never really an option for bisexual people it's either uh, there's i think there's one dating app that has it but then the rest are sort of um either or and i remember and you do get a lot of bi erasure in online spaces where they just kind of forget to acknowledge that we exist. Um, I remember once, a couple of <laughs> months ago, there was sort of this online quiz that everybody, not quiz, it was like an online, like test, not test either, that's the wrong word. It was sort of to do with like um, dating and stuff that a lot of people were taking. And I sort of did it as well. And, but the first question was, what's your sexuality? And there wasn't an option for bisexual people. <laughs> so oh, I, I can imagine that. doing it. Because <laughs> I was I mean, like, well, I can't click anything. But um, yeah, so that has been tricky. And especially like on dating apps, there'll be, a, there'll be, it'll be very difficult because sometimes you'll come across women who say that they're only looking for gay women. Um, and they're not interested in dating bisexual people and then for and then sometimes you'll find if you there'll be men who are only there to you know fetishize bisexual women and so it's really difficult to see who actually has good intentions and actually wants to get to know you as a person as opposed to just dismiss your existence or you know um, take advantage of you yeah, I actually honestly think that's down to representation and I think that's down to, you know, not having enough by visibility and I think that's where that boils down to that people do kind of sadly treat the bi community in that way, um, which actually leads on to my next question. Do you think there is enough positive bi representation on TV and media and is the community represented in the right way or does it play to cis hetero fantasies? Yes, so I don't think that there is enough representation, full stop, let alone positive representation. The, either it's what happens is in a show that somebody will come out as bisexual, but then that won't actually be there. Um, then they'll sort of leave that identity or not mention it again. Um, and then for a lot of it, even if they do happen to be bisexual, they'll be um, sort of labelled as gay or lesbian. Um, or um, the bisexual person is plays into all of the stereotypes, which is incredibly frustrating. So the one bisexual character that I can think of, I think this is the only one that I can think of from the top of my head, is... Um, a character in Neighbours, um, which is the show that I watch with my mum every day. And um, in it, the bisexual person is sort of, has been sw cheating on men and women, both with the other sex. So um, they'll sort of, they're currently married to a man, but they're flirt, they're, there's like this whole side plot where they're um, flirting with a woman and she has this thing happening with a woman and um, it's frustrating because at, on the one hand I'm so excited that there's like a bisexual person on TV that my mother is watching but on the other hand the representation is so negative that I'm not sure if it's even doing any good. 
Yeah, I, I I totally get that. And you know, now that you've mentioned that, I've had a few characters come up in my head that I've been recently watching, where the person, the bisexual person, is kind of navigating. Uh, dating two people and it has been really fetishized and I think that's just awful and I just think to myself how how the people who identify as bi must feel you know because it's such a negative portrayal on tv and that's just recently the character I'm thinking of is from like an American tv show and it just makes me think well you know that's making bisexual people look manipulative when Mm -hmm. you know and that's horrible and it's so toxic but it's sad that tv does not it is not at that point where TV shows are not taking responsibility f- for portraying negative attitudes and people are absorbing these attitudes and it's horrible. And I think uh, there needs to be more done to try and stop this happening. And, and it's important that people have proper representation. I don't think, um, firstly, I, I think there is hardly any by representation. I, I don't even think I, I know um of any positive ones at the moment or you know you hear about musicians or people um, who are celebrities that identify as bisexual but I always sometimes think to myself are they really doing this because they are bisexual or are they doing this just to gain more followers and that's what kind of scares me a little bit that you know it's it's similar to um, the commercialization of the pride flag Mm -hmm. you know you see like lots of supermarkets supermarket chains and businesses now all of a sudden in June and August putting out a pride flag outside their business and but yet you think to yourself are they really as inclusive as they make out do I really feel safe going into that venue just because there's a pride flag hanging outside it um Mm -hmm. I probably would feel more um safer going in if it had say for example the bi flag or the trans flag if that Mm -hmm. was out a venue I'd feel more confident because I thought okay well they're going out their way to um, kind of give a, a specific uh, community, you know, so I, I like that idea of the fact that mm-hmm. we do have different flags, but when it comes to the pride flag now, I think it's just been commercialized too much. Uh, that's, yeah. my, that's my opinion, sadly. Um, and I, th- I think you're right in terms of media portrayal, we really do need more people visible. It's crazy to think that there's so much gay representation yet in terms of bisexual people, there's hardly any. And yet I think I'm not even sure what the statistics are around people, um, how many people are bisexual in terms of uh, statistics and stuff. But that definitely not having positive role models on TV and media and um, will probably not help people come to terms with who they are. You know, they don't want to be seen as that negative person on TV. Um, Mm -hmm. just generally, we, I think we've t- talked about this question before, but um, can you tell me about your experiences um, of being in the bi community? Have they improved or got worse as a person of colour? So this is kind of more touching upon, you know, um, the last few years, there's been a lot going on, especially with COVID, Black Lives Matter. Um, and do you think the bi community are kind of standing up for other marginalised communities? Um, to be honest, it's difficult to say because, um, there are very few spaces that are sort of collections of bi people, uh, to begin with. And then on top of that, because of the lack of representation, it's difficult for us to sort of form a cohesive movement. Um, and in my, from, in my personal experience, um, I don't think that it's improved or got worse, to be honest. I think it's very much our representation, our involvement in various things and, um, you know, our, um, how we are seen by other c- groups has largely just plateaued and has stayed the same. I haven't seen really any improvements or sort of negativity, increased negativity. It's more just plateaued I don't know how else to describe it yeah I I would like to see more people you know uh, show up and represent you know I just don't see enough bisexual people standing up and saying look um, you know this is my identity this is you know I think we need 
as a collective, it's not just the onus shouldn't just be on bisexual people. I think it should be on different communities around uh, society that should be reaching out and saying, yeah, you know what? Why is there no bi, bi representation here? Why is there um, no bisexual person at the table? And if they're not at the table, we should have them at the table and find someone to represent. Um, mm -hmm. and, but not only that, but actually have their voice heard. I, f I sometimes find that they get their voices get diluted amongst the kind of other um, dominant kind of communities out there. And it's, it's sad to hear, but um, it's something I'm hoping that we can work on. And that really leads on to kind of my final question, which is around what can the queer community do to support the bi community? I mean, I talked a little bit about, you know, um, having representation at events and meetings, but is there any advice that you could give me, you know, as a, uh, a cis gay man? Yeah, so I would say probably being able to have more open discussions about societal issues, like I was mentioning before, like, you know, heteronormativity is often spoken in context of people who come out as gay and lesbian and even trans, but it's never really spoken about when people come out as bisexual, which causes a lot of issues within our community, because then a lot of people um, use it as a stepping stone to, like, coming out of the closet as gay and lesbian which obviously is I personally think that that's not their fault at all it's the fault of society not giving proper education and um you know a lot of pressure and internalized homophobia um so if we can have more of these discussions and do more to tackle that then um that will give a lot more support to the bi community um and then on top of that um sort of more specifically for people of colour, having more safe spaces for them where they won't face discrimination um, for the colour of their skin. Um, and also because so much of queer culture is heavily focused around sort of alcohol and partying and that kind of thing, um, which is not something I really, I, I enjoy a good party, but it is sometimes nice to also just um, have other spaces um, where we can sort of exist and yeah having more more representation written into mainstream media. That's amazing that's exactly what I wanted to hear you know um, and I mean here at Hadaya that's what we plan to do you know and we have people like you We've, we, we don't have enough a representation from the bi community so if there is any people who want to volunteer for Hadaya who identify as bisexual please get in touch with us come onto our website and google us and follow us on social media and we look forward to sort of doing more events and linking in with more uh, organizations that help the bi community um, and on that note I would just like to say thank you everybody and um, thank you very much, Asia, for taking part in this event as well for us. Yeah, no problem. I really 